Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks interesting to you, please carry on and watch the video. And also, just one more thing before we go. Please, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so as you can see, I've just given Geo Mormont here a primer with a black primer. And I've just added a bit of texture to the bottom of his base. So we've got our texture that fit in with the rest of my army that I'm painting up as well. And to start off with here, I'm going to start off with his skin, which is only in the one spot here, just in the on his face since he's wearing gloves and stuff like that. So nice and easy here. But as you can see with our barbarian flesh tone that we're using here, it's very thin compared to our black primer here. So it's going to take a few coats. So don't forget to use thin layers and slowly build it up. I think in the end this ended up by taking me about three coats. So don't be afraid to wait between each. Let it dry and get that full coverage so you can get that nice even look. Then once you're happy with the coverage that it's at, we can start off with our highlights now. And this is where I'm coming in with some neutral flesh here. And since we're doing our highlights, of course, I'm going for the highlighted spots. That's the, you know, the bridge of the nose there, the eyebrows, the uh, edge of the cheeks. Just the areas that are nice and predominant on the model here. And as you can see, I've actually switched to a finer tip brush so I can get a little bit better angle on these areas and just really pick up the highlights a little bit more subtly than using our base coat brush that we're using here as well so and it's probably a little bit hard to see on camera but it really does lighten it up quite a lot here especially since we're aiming for those areas where the sun would naturally hit then once we have that complete what i'm going to do now is come in with some flesh wash and what i'm going to be doing is of course just giving a wash over their face making sure it all gets nicely into those recesses uh, especially into like those eye sockets and that since i'm not painting any eyes on the miniature here i haven't been painting any on any of my game of thrones models so i want to keep it sort of consistent with that so i want to let that wash sit in there nicely and keep an eye on that as it's drying but remember with you here that uh just be careful that when not getting it to dry in places we don't want we get little splotches on the face then once we have his skin complete what we're going to do now is come on with some deep blue and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be dry brushing this onto pretty much the entirety of the model where his clothing is, so that's his uh, cloak he's got, his armor, everything like that. I'm giving it a good overall cloak coating with our dry brush here that you can see. That I'm just going over, and you can see too with our dry brushing, I've made it very, very, very light and subtle. So it's going to slowly introduce a bluish tone to the black of our uh, Night's Watch, as you know here, which have uh, pretty much black armor. But I wanted to increase that with a little bit more interest, and this is what I'm doing the blue dry brushing for is to give that little bit of interest in and it's going to slowly build up and as you can see um, very very slowly but don't be afraid to just take your time rather than going for a bit heavier of a dry brush. Then once you're happy with the amount of blue you've gotten into your miniature, I want to come in now with some smoke and this is a very sort of uh, contrast like colour but I'm going to be applying this to over the gloves of our miniature to give them that sort of brown tone in there so you could easily use a uh, brown contrast paint to do this exact same thing here as uh, the smoke paint that i'm using here is very very similar to a contrast paint in terms of uh, the way it spreads over a model so don't be afraid to do that in here as well and as well with the smoke i'm also going to be using it on the boots as well so don't forget to do them too And then coming in with a pure black here, which is matte black, which is what I'm using. I'm going to be using it for the edge of the trim around his uh, lower half of his armor that he's got here, where it's got these nice sort of like uh, studs in there as well. I'm just going to be doing the trim with just the straight pure black. And as you can see, as we're applying that, it's easy to see the difference where we did the dry brushing with the deep blue on there and the black area. So it's a great way to uh, differentiate different parts of the model, as you can see. Then once we have that trim picked out, what I'm going to do now is come in with some gun metal. So any metal is going to be great for this. And of course, like as the name implies of the colour we're using, we want to be applying this over to all our metallic areas. So of course this is a sword and uh, Geo Mormont too has sort of like uh, uh, armour plating on his chest as well. So I want to make sure I want to pick those out. And like I said before in the last step, they've got these nice sort of like metal rivets on the lining of his uh, clothing there so i want to make sure we pick those out as well he also has a couple on his uh, gloves as well so don't forget to pick those out and you can see he's got this nice chain across his neck too holding up that nice big fur cloak so just give spend some time really make sure you get in and paint them all 
and it'll really give a nice effect, especially at the end result of it. Then once we have all those metallic areas picked out, I'm actually going to come in with one more metallic and it's going to be greedy gold here. And I'm going to be using this with the chain that's holding his cloak, uh, his nice big fur cloak across him. I want to paint that in the gold there as well, um, just to give some little bit of differentiation in there with all this metallic and really give a nice eye-catching piece to the miniature as well since we're getting very similar with some of our colors here so adding in little bits like this can really help uh, make the piece eye-catching from a distance then once we have that complete what i'm going to do now is come in with some mummy robes which is an off-white color and we're going to be using this for dior's hair and his uh, beard that he's got as well being very careful as you can see i've switched to a finer brush to do this so i can really uh, concentrate the area and since we are using a uh, very very light color on a black prime it's going to take a couple of layers so don't be afraid to spend a few layers remember wait between each layer for it to completely dry before applying the next and give you the best overall coverage especially on such a light color over a dark priming then once we have that all complete what we're going to do now is coming in with a wash and i'm going to be using dark tone here but non oil would also work as well and of course this is a black wash so I'm going to be applying this to everywhere we're basically painted, of course, just avoiding the skin, of course, is going to be the most important thing to avoid, but giving a nice heavy coat over everything, including uh, Gior's hair as well. I'm going to be giving them uh, a coat over that, except for when I get to that part of doing uh, wash over his hair, I'm going to be thinning my wash down just a little bit so it's not so dark and um, apparent and risk run the risk of really staining everything up there so being a little bit light on that part but as you can see just liberally coating it over everywhere really making sure that it gets into all those little nooks and crannies and really uh, is going to help the effect especially once it's dry that it's going to be even more subtly colored uh, black with uh, different colors on it rather than uh, being quite sticking out with our blue here but if you want to go with that you just want to apply the blue afterwards again giving it that highlight up but for me i'm going to be uh, going for that real dark look and making it very more subtle so uh, it's totally up to you how you want to do this here but i'm going to be leaving out the uh, dry brushing step back over us to highlight it back up but if you want to go with a bit more blue look then just come back in with our uh, dry brushing again to get bring that blue back in there then once our wash is completely dry you can see that we've got very subtle looks uh, in our black robes that our night's watch man is wearing here and like i said uh, just in the last step that we were doing that i wanted a very subtle uh it's probably a bit hard to see on camera it probably looks all black and it looks like i did nothing here just turned everything to black but uh, in person it's uh very subtle and you can see that blue in there but like i said you can come back in with a dry brush to uh, bring that back up but for now we're coming to uh Gior's cloak that he's wearing here and since he's part of the mormont family and a bear is there sigil we're going with sort of a bearish type uh, fur cloak that we're going for here so starting off with rhinox hide as you see me use to give that nice deep dark brown as our nice base coat and of course remembering to give a good overall coverage here really getting into all those areas that nice sculptured texture of that fur then once we have that base coat complete, we're going to come in now with some Burnt Umber, which is a slightly lighter colour again. Very, very similar to Rhinox Hide here, so it's a very slight step up. So you could probably skip this step if you want to, but I'm going for a lot of different tones on here. So everyone's sort of going to count, especially since we're using a lot of browns here. So coming in and then just giving us a quick dry brush over top, making sure that we're being very, very careful and not getting it over anywhere we don't want to, because it's going to be a little bit harder to tidy up those areas that we've already painted. So just being aware of that. Then once we have that complete, we're going to come in again with another dry brush, this time with leather brown, which is an even lighter brown again. And as I'm doing progressively as well with these dry brushings, I'm also concentrating it more to the higher points where the sun would sort of naturally hit, not focusing so much on the uh, underside. So basically I'm sort of dry brushing down uh, from the top motion downwards and being a bit harder at the top and then a bit lighter at the bottom. So we're catching some sort of natural uh, lighting. 
And then with that complete, we're coming in now with khaki, which is going to be our final highlight on our fur here. And this is a very, very bright color, so it's going to really, really stand out. But we're going to be applying a wash of this so I can dull it down a little bit. But I want that really nice high contrast. So we've got different layers of color in here. Probably a little bit hard to see on camera, but with all those layers that we've done on our fur, we've got a really distinct look in our fur. And it really uh, adds a lot of uh, interest to the piece especially on a close inspection as well so just remembering that i'm coming up here going from the top down and being lighter at the bottom sort of giving a frame around dior here as well and you can see just being very very careful in the areas that were already painted as well but really sticking to the high points of around his shoulders and that to really sort of frame them up Now that we have his fur cloak complete, we're going to come in now with some burnt umber again. And this time, instead of uh, using it on our fur, we're going to be using it for all the leather straps on Gior here. So uh, he's got quite a few of them on here, so spend a little bit of time switch to a finer point brush like I have here so I can really pick out all the little straps he has on him as well. Being uh, careful not to get anywhere we don't uh, want the paint to be, so a lot of brush control practice here, especially with the little belts in between his uh, weaponry there. Then once we have those leather straps complete, what we're going to do now is come in with some black grey and I'm going to be using this for just a couple small pieces on the miniature and that is the claws of Dior Mormont's uh, cloak that he's got on him as well as that I'm also going to be painting up the beak of the raven as well and just like that it's a very very subtle colour it's going to be hard to tell especially on camera probably it probably looks exactly the same looks like I'm doing nothing uh, but there is a little bit of a difference in there and just to help separate those pieces out then once we have that complete, we're going to come in with some cavalry brown here, which is going to look very, very red on this model. So a nice eye-catching piece to the miniature here. And I'm just going to be using it for the handle of his weapons here. Actually, he also has another one on the side as well. So don't forget to paint that up too. And you can see immediately it forces your eye to look at the model and these interesting pieces as we're painting this up. So a good way to get you your eye to look all over the model instead of just in one place. Then once we have that complete, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm coming in with a brown wash and I'm going to be using Agrax Earthshade for this. And this is going to be applying to all the areas that were painted up that are brown of course. So we want to be getting in that fur cloak, we want to be getting in the handle of our weapons here, our leather straps. And to really separate those out, especially from the black wash there to help uh, give them a little bit more punch and turn them a little bit more brown looking. And of course to get all the detail that's in those nice sculpted parts of the miniature there so you can see uh, getting a final brush here to wash in making sure I'm just getting it on those areas I want it to be and of course just keep an eye on it as dry so we don't get too much spillage where we don't want it to be especially on that cloak it has a very good tendency to uh, pull up in between the sculpted details of fur and then eventually start staining or running off onto the model so just keep an eye on that then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is come in with some shining silver. And of course this is going to be for our silver highlights on all our metal pieces. So as you can see, coming in with a nice fine tip brush here. And just skimming along the edge of especially that sword. So we're catching the very raised points and we can see that it leaves a nice shining colour on there. And really helps those bits stick out. And then it's just a matter of going over all of the other places and just subtly highlighting them. And with the sort of like a metal plating he has on his chest I'm just going to be highlighting one edge on each of those little pieces to make it look like the light is glinting from uh, above and really catching certain pieces on there just give it a little bit more of a fancier uh, look to it probably a little bit subtle but you'll be able to really notice from a distance when one of the pieces is shined rather than going over the whole thing so just going sort of a little line across the bottom there to make it look like it's catching the sunlight and then with that we can move on to some of the glamour shots and see how it came out And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up Geo Mormon from the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use this video for some inspiration and in painting up your own miniatures. But with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.